kill. Back down. Sign of the game, game. Kill him, Randy. Drop, go. This is awesome, man. This dude's been coming every which direction. Good job, Billy. Hey, folks, we're in Hines County this morning. Actually, going to be hunting on Springdale. Jimmy, tell us a little bit about the hunt. Randy, good to hunt with you again. Uh, we're going to be hunting in northern Hines County on some flooded barnyard grass with a little bit of timber. And uh, the ducks were in there yesterday. I hope they're in there this morning. We're gonna hunt with Billy Munger and Stacy uh, Davidson. They are the, the owners of the property. And uh, we're looking for a good hunt. Jimmy, me and you pretty good shot. Can they hit a duck? They can't, but we'll help them out. We'll help them all <laughs> we can. We got a long drive, don't we? We got about a 30 minute drive. Let's, cool. load, let's load up and go hunting. Sounds good. Well, the spot that we, we hunted in is a place that would naturally flood, but we had to put structures in to hold the water. And the water's in there when the creek, the creek actually flooded, we didn't really pump that particular hole where we in. And what it is, it's a kind of willow break of some timber, and then we, we planted barnyard grass or wild millet, kind of millet, uh, all around it. It's probably a pretty big duck hole, probably about 15 acres of total planted uh, type of crop around there. We plant and you have to manage it and, and then put the water on it. The water got on it late December this year. And uh, so it's about, you know, about a foot, two feet deep out there mostly. The uh, other good thing about that millet or barnyard grass is that it lasts the whole season. Whereas soybeans uh, sometimes will, it, it, it goes bad after a while and, and corn, a lot of times the ducks will eat all the corn if they can reach it. So that duck, from the time he gets here to the time he leaves, um, he, he has a food supply. Right, and it's it's, it's seeds, and they, they really, I don't know why they like it, but they like it. Let the games begin. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's get some ducks, get some mallards right on us. Let's take them. Here we go. Y'all ready? All right, burn them up. Man, that's pretty, that red dog. That's one guy. Rocco, back. Hey. Now we do it. Let me get that bird within Bailey. Yeah. Right, okay. There we go, man. <laughs> Good boy. Now we're doing right. That's two. Both the same. Look at them go at the same time. That's good. Two good retrieves. Both green heads, wasn't it? All right, get back. Go back, sit in. Kill him, Randy. Oh! Rock go. Good night. <laughs> That's funny. That's good. You got him. That's to your right. Yep. Roscoe, heel. That kind of straight. Here we go, Randy, right here. Yeah, man, kill him. That's down. Oh, yeah. That was pretty. Good job, guys. That was pretty, pretty, pretty. They wanted to go in that corner. 
in that far corner yeah. there. All right. Back down. And that bird did good. That was good. Kill him. Oh. <laughs> Duck down. Duck down. Ready? That two or three? Three. There's that one right there. That one went under on. Oh, going on top. Hey, Jimmy missed him. I did. He scared him and got him. He was too far from me. I tell you what, and many ducks as we saw this morning, man. I mean. Hey, what more could somebody ask for? Shoot him, guys. Shoot him. Good shot. Coming in. Here we go. Stacy. Stacy, kill him. Roscoe. I'll go after the boat. Don't go same duck. Good, 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 good. Good dog. Good hunt. What about it? We done? Get it done, huh? Get it done. 24. Oof. Limited ducks by 815. <sighs> uh, we ended up doing pretty good though, didn't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, we took, what, we had 400 this morning. We killed, a, everybody killed a limit of ducks. We did. And it just, it's hard to get much better than that. It was, and we hit, it happened this morning, the same thing that happened uh, morning before last. Our, a lot of our ducks are coming in just before legal shooting time. I really don't know what's up. That's usually not, you know, that's just the first time it's really that's going on. Uh, don't really know why, I gotta figure that one out. Hey, uh, a lot of temptation there, but we were perfectly we were, legal. We were perfectly legal. Hey, we thanks. waited on. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you, Jim. For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors Magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. In it contains several interesting features, such as wildlife photography, salooner tables, and even a kid's page. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you will receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and even our wildlife management areas. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. We're here today at Enid Lake. We're gonna be catching black and white crappie, but we're gonna do something a little unique today. We're gonna to be catching them, but we're gonna turn them loose. Uh, with the biologist today from University of Mississippi, we're gonna be putting radio transmitters in them so they can get some data on these fish. Uh, beautiful day. I said, let's go catch some fish. What we're doing is uh, we're, we're catching these fish and uh, we're going to be, uh, Ole Miss, University of Mississippi is going to be <laughs> tagging them for our telemetry study and releasing them back in Enid, which they'll be following the fish throughout the year, watching their movements and habits throughout the year. 
we're doing the telemetry project on, on three of the four reservoirs here and following to see if there's any difference in the movement during the low water period, high water period, where the habitat, where the best habitat is during the spawn, where the best habitat is during the fall, summer, uh, looking at them year round. It's a study that, that'll show you where the fish move and why they move and you can look at different weather conditions and, and times of the year and you can kind of get some kind of idea of what, what the cause of their movement and, and where the, what, what they like and what they don't like during that time of the year. And if you find that those habitats out, you can also do some renovations in the, in the lake or try to produce better habitat using this type of study. What I'm doing is I'm focusing on the larger of the fish in the lake and I'm going to be looking at differences between white and black crappie. This is the uh, radio telemetry tag. This is how we locate the fish and we're able to get get pretty close to where they're at when we, when we find this. And it emits a beep every second for about six months. I can usually pick it up from about a hundred yards or so. And uh, on this one, this part is the, the uh, archival tag, and it's gonna be taking measurements of temperature and depth every three minutes for 70 days. So we're gonna really get a good idea what these fish are doing um, throughout the day, month, and seasonal, seasonal movements. So Dr. Parsons, tell me a little bit about your study. What, are you, what is your goal, to, what are you trying to achieve for the crappie? Right, yeah, we're, uh, we're really interested in describing uh, spawning habitat for both black and white crappie. Uh, the, the project was originally proposed uh, to look at backwater habitats and uh, clearly knowing the spawning uh, habitat and know, knowing the spawning requirements of, of a fish that is as, as popular and as important as crappie is a, is a very important thing. This is uh, the reservoir on the tagging boat. Uh, we have another boat that's going to be catching the fish. They're going to be transferring to this boat where the, the, the transmitter will actually be attached to the fish and released. There are basically three tags on, on a number of these fish. Uh, there is the, uh, the orange spaghetti streamer tag, and that tag has the, uh, the contact information. The electronics portion of the tag, there's a radio transmitter and it's, it's sending out a radio signal, and we use uh, our antenna on the boat here in our receiver. And basically, you'll see us motoring across the reservoir uh, for an entire day or more, listening for this signal. So that, that fish is sending out its own signature signal, which we will pick up with our receiver on, on the crappie boat. And then the other part of the electronics of the tag, there is an archival tag. Uh, the archival tag uh, has the electronics that actually records the depth and the temperature of the fish. Uh, so we'll be able to, to retrieve that tag. Hopefully fishermen will send that in to us. Uh, and we will upload the information, the data, onto our computer and we'll actually be able to plot out over time the depth and temperature changes of that individual fish. Now what if you have a person, I know I have a lot of friends that they love the fish, but they don't keep fish. If they were to catch one of your tags, but they want to release the fish back. Right. Um, in that case, uh, of course, we do encourage them to keep the fish. If they, if they don't want to, uh, uh, to keep the fish, they could remove the, the tags, all the tags, the, the, the streamer and the electronics portion. And, and call us, uh, and, by, and by the way, we will come and pick it up wherever it is. If it's an archival tag in, in particular, we will make the trip to come pick that tag up. We don't want to release these fish near the outflow of the, of the dam here. So we're going to run up uh, the reservoir and we're going to stop, we'll anchor up and then we'll work in that one spot, release them there to 
hopefully lessen the chance that they end up going out the outflow, which we have had uh, three fish go out the outflow. And when they do that, they're out of our study after that. So what you're hearing there is you're hearing the tag the transmitter from the fish itself. And we always turn it on to check to make sure it's transmitting before we let the fish go. Our flood control reservoirs in the state of Mississippi are, are world class for producing record size crappie. I mean, we, we have the Enid Reservoir where we stand right now has the, the uh, world record crappie uh, came from these waters. So what you're saying is if your chances of catching a world class crappie is to come to Mississippi. Absolutely. We have them, they're here. They are here, yeah. <laughs> Did you know that money spent on a Mississippi hunting and fishing license is just like an investment? The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing, like providing public hunting opportunities on wildlife management areas, advising private landowners on deer and habitat management, providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes, and operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors. Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today. Back and good. <laughs> Whoa! Whoop! We got in, buddy. Hey, folks, we're at Prairie Wildlife. We got Mr. Paul Lavender. Mr. Paul Lavender, you could say, is the boss out here. He's our guide and our, our dog trainer. Mr. Lavender, we've got a lot of hunters. What are we going to do today and tell us how we're going to be safe doing it? Well, you can't be too safe on a bird hunt. And we probably let two shooters at a time shoot. Sometimes the dog gets anxious and runs after the bird. We want to be careful well, not to no shoot bird. at a no low shot. bird. I know you could have went anywhere you wanted to, and we thank you for coming hunting with us. Hey, we're glad to be here. Get any birds? <laughs> Man, that was pretty impressive. He's backing good. And they flying right good. You were right, Mr. Jimmy. You told me they flew good. Bring them off. Bring it right here, buddy. Good girl. Yeah, you don't get feathers in your mouth. Whoop, there's another bird in here. Yes, sir. I believe you got that one, dude. Thanks, sir. We got him, buddy. They flew good. They flew real good. They're doing well. We got a single point down here. Whoop, no bird, no shot. Are you still loaded? There might be another one or two in here. Whoa, Timmy. Whoa, Timmy. Somebody got that bird. We can always trade that. That's right. I got part of him. <laughs> That's what you call ours. By that and being over here, it may be some more over here. What typically would a would a person do for a half a day? How many would he typically kill on the on the release birds? We got folks that'll kill 30, 40 birds. 
you know, just depending on what they want to do. We got some folks that don't want to hunt very long, and we got some that want to hunt long and you want them to. But you charge by the bird, that's the way it works. Yeah, charge, well, we charge $325 for half day. That's a guide, dogs, 10 birds. 10 birds, okay. And that's then it's $9.5 half dollars over that. And the birds fly good, they work hard at trying to keep the birds conditioned to fly good. Well, they are today. Whoop. I imagine that's gonna be a cover way old Timmy's talking. Looks like he's right on top of them, too. Well, that's pretty nice cover. Maybe some more in there. There he goes. That's a good shot, Mr. Hayes. Got both of them, didn't we? Good shot. Whoop, whoop. That's what we came to do, guys. Good boy. Good boy. Good shot. Good shot. That's one of them singles. Good shot, Mr. Hayes. Good lucky. I'd rather be lucky this March. That's right. That's a very good shot. We're going to attempt to go out and find three or four covers of wild quail. Uh, we've been working about 15 years to get a population back, and the last count they had, we were up to 62. And we've been able to find some 25 bird coveys quite often, and that's what we're going after today. I got two. Got two. Good shot, Randy. That is how you shoot a quail. <laughs> I would rather when I shoot for them to fall out in the road that we right. just walk right up there and get them. That's the way to do it. I'm and trying shoot to make them in it... the head too, and male birds only. Well, I was shooting for a little higher on the head, but I still got it. Right, right. Good shot. <laughs> That's a wild quail in Mississippi. Yeah. That was a great oh, shot, Randy yeah. made. That was a long shot. That's beautiful. In here. Beautiful, and that's actually a male. That's where they get the bob white from, that white head. That's the, uh, the male quail. Bob white quail. That's fun. All right, you think Our executive director, Dr. Sam Polis, is convinced he can bring these quail back, and I know it's a, it's a big challenge, and uh, Mr. Mr. Brian here is put a lot of effort into doing the same thing, and uh, I'm hoping that we're gonna be successful at the Charles Ray Nix WMA. I know that's what they're concentrating on. Mr. Brown, you said you burn this every other year? Yeah, just to keep the thatch down. If you look here between this grass, see all the open ground? Yeah. And that, they say that quail really need that ground to move and run in. And where you had fest kill the moot, just solid. You know. So now you got all this bunch of grass, and they can move and run around in it. You burn it every couple of years to keep the thatch level down and then to keep your invasive shrubs from taking over. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a pretty good shot to get two on the rise now. Well, I was just lucky. I'm sure you shot at the same birds, too. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. But, you know, the birds flushed and scattered, yeah. so they didn't all pop up in one whack. And uh, you catch them out feeding like that, you know. You had two good flights out of that. Yeah. We did. That was cool. It gives you a lot more time when they all just bust out together. That's the one I shot at. That's that other one that you took. That was fun. We got three roosters. That was that was a covey of birds, probably what eight, nine birds. Uh, yeah, I'd say ten. Uh, what I would guess. That's that's. But the they got up in a for wild birds. They got up in a in a good fashion for us to get those good shots. We're either getting luckier or we've had a lot of practice this morning and getting to be better shooters. I, I think I'd rather be lucky. <laughs> We did have a lot of practice this morning. We did. We sure did. We got rid of all our misses this morning. We sure did. We got a little bigger gun, too, Mr. Yeah. Jimmy. That helped. i tell you what. If quail hunting comes back and we have this much fun, I promise you, I'll give up deer hunting. Me, deer. too. Oh, man, I would anyway. I'd rather do that than kill a boon and crock. Uh-oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa. Somebody got that bird.